welcome back to JW Discussions. Today we will be looking at the website. Now, this time of year, um, your Jehovah's Witness, you know, um, it is kind of lonely. Uh, perhaps you're at home, um, or, or maybe you went out in the ministry today, but, you know, that doesn't last all day, right? You know, you go to the arrangement and, you know, everyone's kind of not wanting to do a whole lot. So maybe you do a, f a few uh, not at homes and uh, you kill a half hour. So then you kill a half hour doing a few return visits. Then you stop by McDonald's or your favorite coffee spot, Starbucks, and you grab a coffee. It's, you know, it's this time of year. They're making those nice fancy coffees. That's what I would do. I'd go back to the car or maybe I'd try to, I don't know, maybe informal witness, try some of this new stuff that they're doing. But you see, the day's not going to, you're not going to do that all day. You're probably going to maybe go out for an hour or so and have an hour coffee maybe today. Formal witness, because you can kind of do that now. So that's kind of how I would do it. I'd come home, it'd be noon, be all alone maybe. You know, everyone's kind of doing things. So I go on to the JW Org website. So let's do that. We're going to go on to their website. And what do we have? The loneliness epidemic. Uh, let's zoom in on that. Yeah, it's it's lonely out there. Um, how can you cope? Okay, well, this is kind of for what is this for me? Did the did the society, the organization, put this in for me, or is this for other people? Well, let's look at it. Approximately half of the U.S. adults report experiencing loneliness with some of the highest among young people. So, you know, uh, I guess I'm one of them. I'm here all alone. Boxing day. Principles that can help reduce activities that isolate you. Well, I, I did go out in service. No one talked to me in the coffee shop. I just sat there and I said, hey, we don't believe in Christmas, do you? That didn't work, so I'm just sitting there. Hey, would you like to know more about Jehovah's Witnesses? I hate using that name. There's so much bad publicity on it. What should I say? What should I say? Maybe I'll just re do my tablet and watch a movie, and maybe someone will ask me. Maybe they will ask. Maybe Jehovah will direct them to me. All I have to do is sit there and play a movie on my tablet a little bit. Everyone else is kind of looking at their computer. So I'll do that. I'll kill a whole morning here and count time. I'll check the box. <laughs> I don't know. But it, at some point, you're going to go home and you're going to be lonely yourself. So um, Bible principle, a true friend shows love at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look for opportunities to help others. Yeah, I already did that. I went out in the ministry. Bible principle, there's more happiness in giving than there is in receiving. Ha ha. But you see, I'm not going to think about this as a JW, but now that I'm out, that makes sense because if I go out and give to the homeless, the homeless are always needing some help. They're always hungry. They're always... I go into the Starbucks, they're there, you know, with their hands out. I never, I never give those guys money. They're probably drug addicts, right? No, no. You see, that's a false concept. Some people end up homeless for the most bizarre reasons. A divorce, all kinds of reasons. Lost a job. Um, most people are living off their last dime. You know, they run out paycheck to paycheck. So... Um, Anyways, <laughs> there's more happiness in giving than there is in receiving. So we're going into Starbucks. There's a homeless guy. Say, hey, come on out of the cold. Come with me. They'll let you in. Starbucks will let the homeless in as long as they, uh, uh, they're they with you. And, and you tell them, hey, I'm buying the guy a sandwich. So you buy the guy a coffee and a sandwich. And maybe you don't have that $10 fancy Christmas coffee. You just have a coffee. and then And then you can share the wealth with the homeless guy. You see... To me, outside of the Jehovah's Witness, that's that makes sense. Acts twenty, 
And 35, there's more happiness in giving because it, it does feel good. You know, so heck, I could go out all day and just do that, do something like that. Maybe work at the soup kitchen, visit with people. I'd, I'd be kind of working and visiting with all kinds of people. I would solve this problem of being lonely if I was not a Jehovah's Witness. You see, as a Jehovah's Witness, we can't do that. You can't go out and help the homeless. It's not part of the policy. It's not part of the program, the preaching program. It's not in there. It's not part of uh, what Jesus did, I guess. Or it's not part of what Watchtower does. So we, we don't do that. Uh, they, I don't think they recommend it. So now, what do we do next? Well, I guess just have to stay home and be lonely. Maybe. Okay, well, let's, let's quit being lonely. Let's look at something else on this website. Let's see what else there is. Um, hmm. What does the Bible say about Christmas? I wonder what the Bible says. Let's look at what they say. Hmm. The Bible's answer. It does not give the date of Jesus' birth, nor does it say that we should celebrate his birthday. Uh, it's the same old, same old. History, celebrating it, December 25th, gift giving, partying, Christmas lights, mistletoe, Christmas tree. They just quoted encyclopedia, encyclopedia, encyclopedia. What do they boil it down to? Pagan, that's what they're saying. Common among the pagan, pagan. It's all pagan, right? So anything that is pagan is evil, right? Jehovah's Witness. That's what a Jehovah's Witness believes. That's what they're taught. Okay, well, let's get out of that. Christmas is just pagan. Peace on earth, how will it come? Um... Not, uh, peace on earth, how will it come? Not by humans, but by means of God's kingdom. Ruled by Jesus. But we're not talking about Jesus this time of year. He's in the manger, the Magi. We, we haven't heard anything about the Magi. Uh, the Magi were pagan. They're in the Bible. You and I read about them. They give Jesus the three gifts. It's in the book of Luke, book of Matthew. But they never talk about it. They don't talk about it. Huh. Only God's kingdom. But you see, what is God's kingdom to a Jehovah's Witness? Well, they don't really know. They don't really know. They, they think it's something in heaven. They think it's the watchtower. They, they, that's what a Jehovah's Witness thinks God's kingdom is. Peace on earth, how will it come through the watchtower? Uh, who is Jesus here? Let's talk about Jesus. The next one. Who is he? Let me see. Okay, he's lived in heaven. He lived in heaven. Why did Jesus come to earth? Well, God sent him. So he had to die for man, right? Why do we need the ransom? So I see where they're going with this. Why did he die? What is Jesus doing now? You see, what they're doing here is talking about Jesus. He's not a baby. Why are we talking about him being a baby? What's the big deal? You know, who is Jesus now? Like, uh, if, if I'm talking about you, am I talking about your baby? Or am I talking about you, what you're, what you're doing right now? You see, that's kind of the argument here. Who is Jesus? But, you know, I would think that if Jesus came to earth through an immaculate conception, that's what you call it, right? Through Mary, it's immaculate. It's from God. That's what the Catholics call it. Jehovah's Witnesses don't use that word. Never heard it used. They don't really talk about it much, about Mary, you know, God put the seed into Jesus, or into Mary, and came Jesus. They don't get into that. They don't talk about Mary at all, like this time of year. I haven't seen much. Not, not, not in a positive way. So this is just about Jesus. Who is he today, right? Why did he come to earth? They talk about a little bit of that stuff, but they didn't talk about him as the baby here. No, nope. they didn't talk about the Magi. Like, it's Christmas time. Come on, JW Org. It's Christmas time. These are questions that are on. This is questions that are on my mind, is the Magi. Now, we can go deeper into uh, JW Org. I just hit that. Uh, and you can see why don't Jehovah's Witnesses celebrate Christmas. There's another article here. 
Uh, common, the reason why we don't is that they don't believe. This is a myth. They don't believe in Jesus. Fact is we're Christians. Myth, you divide families. Fact is we care deeply about families. Myth is you miss out on Christmas spirit. Fact is we strive to be generous and peaceable every day. No, you don't. No, we didn't do that. You know, you know how we be generous and peaceable every day? Is we obey and listen. We go to the kingdom hall and we donate to the kingdom hall. The kingdom hall never ever says go and drop some money in for the homeless help with the sock program or the blanket program or the soup kitchen. Never, ever, ever have I seen them talk about that. And they don't help that way. So we strive to be generous and peace. This is not true. So why don't Jehovah's Witnesses celebrate Christmas? Well, because then you have more money to put into the donation box for JW Org. I, I always thought that. That's what I always thought. Because I couldn't get the, ma the Magi. Why were they disqualifying the Magi? They're pagan. They're astrologers. They demonize the Magi is what JW Org has done. And it's sad. It's part of the Bible. It's not demonic. So they go on to talk about uh, they, they don't have anybody else. The apostles didn't celebrate Christmas. Why make Christmas an issue? Many still celebrate it despite knowing about its pagan roots. So you see, what JW Org has done is they made the word pagan into an evil word. If you're pagan, you, you might as well be an apostate. You see, apostate as well. Apostate, pagan. Yo, that's how they, they throw these missiles out at people. It's not the mistletoe, it's missiles that blow up. They hurt. Arrows. They talk about uh, being nice, but that's not nice. There's a lot of pagan people. A lot of people that are not part of Christianity. In fact, on earth, there's, uh, what, 2.8 billion people that are Christian or affiliated? You know, about a third of the earth. So two-thirds of the earth, the majority of the earth is pagan, according to Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, only Jehovah's Witnesses are not pagan. <laughs> They look out, and even if it, all the other religions out there celebrating Christmas, all the other Christians out there are pagan in their mind because they, you know, they might put up a Christmas tree, they might uh, have the manger they, in their church, right? They, they, they demonize this event. It's pagan, pagan roots. And, uh, but you see that the Magi are in the Bible, and they are not Jewish or at least we know. Or do we know? We're not really told a lot about them. So what, what is, uh, there's stories there that they're Persians, kings, astrologers. So I think it would be important to look a little deeper into all of this Christmas thing. I, I think JW Org is just looking at the surface and they want to be different. That's why they don't like the cross on a church. No crosses. That's why they went with the stake. Everything they do is different. And they want to look righteous and pious. But by shooting arrows at pagan people, I think it's wrong because paganism is in the Bible. The Magi were pagan according to Jehovah's Witnesses. That's why they demonize them. The Magi worshipped Jesus. The Magi were directed through a star. They, pagan, they, they demonize a star, by the way. They think... They think the devil put the star in the sky and directed the Magi, who are pagan astrologers. That's how they've taken that Bible narrative and they distorted it. So now the whole Christmas event is pagan. And that's what you, uh, when you leave JW Org, unless you replace that record with something else, that will stay in your mind. And even as an ex-Jehovah's Witness, you will have that viewpoint. Okay, so you have that viewpoint in your mind. Uh, Christmas is pagan when you get out. Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, that's what we feel. Um, how do we change it? Well, it's like I've said before, it's knowledge. And we're going to look at this, uh, we're going to look at a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to look at the Bible. And today I chose to use the Catholic Dewey version, a Dewey Rhymes version. Uh, from Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. 
And Jesus says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So it uses those old words. <laughs> Sometimes they're nice. But we've all read, we've all have read that scripture before. If we ask, if we seek, we will find. If we knock, it will be shown to us. So that's what we're doing on this channel. We're searching. That's part of fixing, fixing my faith. And uh, that's what I've been doing now for two years, looking into the deeper things of the Bible to find out what are we missing? What are we not, what are we not told? So there's something about the Magi that we're not told. And so I did a little bit of digging on this. But first of all, I want to go back to uh, the Jehovah's Witness website. Right, uh, right here. And we're going to pull this up. Now, when I think of um, JW Org and how they have uh, talked about Christmas, how they have uh, wrote off the Magi, and it's just supposition. They say uh, they, they have no proof. There's no proof in the Bible at all that that star was from the devil. None. In fact, in the Bible, there's proof that stars are referred to angels. Angels are referred to stars. So there is proof of that in the Bible. So when I look at JW Org and how they view things, I don't trust them anymore. And here's why. Here's why I don't trust them. And also, the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. And so it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. Well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do, is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. We understand this is how Jehovah operates. He reveals matters gradually when it is needed. So... You got that? They're not inspired, right here. And also, the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. So they're not inspired, nor are they infallible. So they're not inspired. Uh, this information, these decisions that they're making on demonizing the Magi, demonizing the star, they're not inspired. They admit that. And they've made so many mistakes. They're false prophets. And so it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. So it can err. So this Bible that they've created, they've taken out portions of this Bible, took it right out. You know, John 8, 1 to 11, took it right out. It's not even in here. It was in their old Bible. And it's a story about how Jesus was forgiving to the, the prostitute. when he told the Pharisees, he, he, who, whoever casts the first stone, you guys cast the first stone. It's like disfellowshipping, right? Someone does something wrong, and who, who of you who have not sinned will cast the first stone? Well, no one cast the stone. They all walked away, right? That's how it should be uh, when it comes to most of these judicial meetings. You know, who, who, who gives the, these three men the right to cast stones? The Bible doesn't. In fact, the Bible condemns that. So what does JW Org do? You guys look at it yourself. John 8, 1... 1 to 11. They pulled it right out of the Bible, right out of their latest Bible. Go over to the 1984 edition. It's in there. But they got rid of it here. Easier to disfellowship, you see, because all you have for your defense when you go in up against the body of elders is the Bible. And, and you got to kind of have your own case built. That's one of the scriptures I would use. I used to use. But you can't use it no more. It's not in their new Bible. Now, not infallible, not inspired, what else? Well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made. So they're not embarrassed either. So they, they screw up. They tell you guys a whole bunch of crap, like don't take blood fractions. How many people died over organ transplants or blood fractions? Because it wasn't allowed a few years back. Now it's conscious matter. How many people died over that? Well, they're not embarrassed. Uh, all these CSA cases, they're not embarrassed. They don't have to apologize. 
Why? Uh, nor do, is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. Yeah, they don't have to apologize for their elder's book not being right, not reporting CSA, not dealing with it. There's no two witnesses, so a lot of these cases got shuffled aside and victims left and committed suicide. No apology needed because they're handling, they're getting into people's lives and handling things that family counselors, professionals should handle professionals with nine, 10 years experience. These guys have no experience in, in deciphering the Bible. They have no scholars on board that we know of in their writing committee. No one. They don't believe in higher education. If they had a scholar, they'd advertise them. They don't have a Bible scholar. They admit it. They're not inspired. We understand this is how Jehovah operates. He reveals matters gradually when it is needed. Now, this is where they, they believe, their narcissism believes that Jehovah is working through them. They're the faithful slave, and that's how he works. He works through these men that don't get it right, that are allowed to change this book, which says it's not supposed to be changed. So many times they've changed it. And also, the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. And yeah. so... It so that's kind of it. Uh, you know, that's, that's the gist of it for JW.org. They're not inspired. They're infallible. They're making mistakes. They pump out this information about Christmas. Now, what I would like to do is take you to an individual that's inspired. We read the scripture in Matthew. It says, ask and it shall and seek and it shall be given to you. That's what we're doing on this channel. We're researching, we're looking, we're asking. And this is what we're getting back. And we're getting this information back from you guys. This is uh, information that one of the subscribers sent to us. We did the research and it just blew my mind. Now, I revealed some of this guy's uh, information. It's the revelation of the Magi. I revealed that yesterday. I was looking at my footage. I did a lot of ad-libbing. I'm going to get right into this and we're going to read through it again. Uh, I'm going to do that on a separate video from this one, but the revelation of the Magi it just blew my mind. And I and and if you haven't seen it, I'll pin it to the uh, the Christmas thing. You go back to our yesterday's live. You go in about an hour. I start talking about it. But I am going to do a separate video on this, the the revelation of the Magi. And uh, this is a book that uh, this fella. I'm going to just pull him up on the screen so you can see who he is. Brent Lado. Now, this guy is a theologian. Brent Lado is a lecturer in religious studies at the University of Texas at Austin. He previously taught at the University of Oklahoma, Harvard Divinity School, and the Boston University. His other books include The Revelation of the Magi, The Lost Tale of the Wise Men's Journey to Bethlehem. So he has a couple of books. Very well, a well-respected scholar. Now we're going to look at him. Brent uh, Lado received his THD, that's a theology degree, from Harvard University and is an expert in ancient biblical languages and literature. He currently teaches in the Religious Studies program at the University of Oklahoma and lives in, with his wife uh, in Norman, Oklahoma. So, uh, yes, uh, you can subscribe to him. I did. And uh, now you can go on to uh, Amazon. He does have books, The Lost Tale of the Wise Men's Journey, The Revelation of the Magi. And that's what we're looking into. We have, uh, we're going to cover, there's 23 chapters. It's a synopsis or a summary. And I'm going to do that on a separate video to keep it short. So, uh, and I'll attach that at the end. Now, just to finish up here, uh, what, what does he say about his book? Astonishing, delightful, theological, sophisticated. Marvin Meyer, a professor of religious studies. Chapman University said that. So uh, it says here, the theologian Brent Lado presents the ancient account of Melchor, Casper, and Belshazzar, the three wise men who journeyed to Bethlehem to greet the birth of Jesus. The revelation of the Magi offered the first ever English translation of an ancient Syriac manuscript written in the 2nd to 3rd century after the birth of Christ and safeguarded for generations in, a, in the Vatican Library. 
Following in the footsteps of Elaine Pagels and her exploration of the Gnostic Gospels, including the controversial Gospel of Judas, Lander delivers an in invaluable source of information to a world interested in learning more about the nativity and the life of Jesus of Nazareth. So this is phenomenal. We're going to take a look at this further. And uh, this really puts a different light on Christmas once you understand uh, the, the deeper things of the Magi. And the Magi were pagan. They were astrologers and they played an important part of Christmas. In fact, they go back to Adam and to the sun and the treasures, the three treasures were preserved. They were given back then in the time of Adam to Seth. And that was carried all across the ark through the flood and it was preserved for the time of Christ. So there's quite a story here. And if you haven't uh, heard it, uh, I'll be talking about it more and more on the channel. So thanks again, folks. That's my review today for JW Org and a little bit on the Magi and how the Magi really opens up the Christmas, Christmas event. It should give us a different look. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Keep living your life with love. Bye for now.